I'm not going to spoil the book because I hope everybody will buy the book because Martha self-published this book, which I think is incredible. And, and really a, a very brave and daring leap because she noticed that the publishing companies um, weren't supportive. They didn't um, believe in what she was writing and saying as much as she did. So she said, you know what? I'm going to take this into my own hands and I'm going to leap. Just like moving to California, she left. She had no reason to move here. She had no I idea. I'm coming to see you. Yeah, she's like, I'm going to come and get a place so we can hang out more. I'm like, yeah, right, right, right. And then the next week, she's like, I actually I bought this ranch. And I'm like, <laughs> what? <laughs> it's not, you know, it's like, what? what how, you, you can't do that. I don't know anything about that. And she's like, I did it already. And uh, she was like, I'm going to write this book. And you don't want to publish it? I'm going to do that. So I'm going to start my own boutique publishing company. And I'm going to put this book out. And so far, it's actually, you were saying last night, her most successful book, and she published it herself. And it's been out one day. So I'm hoping, uh, and which I think is a real story of bravery. So, But I want to go to the back of the book, um, because uh, she has a guide in the back of the book, which is really a guide for life. And um, I want to go, it's her bewilderment, bewilderment guide, which I love because I've always loved what Mary Oliver said is your one wild and precious life. And, uh, you know, we always think of wild and crazy as bad, and I'm a big believer that it's awesome. And, um, and so she walks you through the steps about how to be wild and how to have this guide and how it can take you through your life. And I want to just clip through them. So the first one, which is, I think, in a way, the most difficult, calm all fear. All fear. Yeah. All, it sounds impossible, but give us like two little lines so people can begin to calm all fear. Yeah. Two words, horse tranquilizers. No, not really. <laughs> um. <laughs> And this is good because you're not necessarily a very calm person, I might add. Yeah. yeah. So okay. it's like I think just for her I being used to able sit to with do Maria and go, we have to do something about your anxiety. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, what are we doing? She's like, I don't know. I said, oh, I don't think <laughs> everybody be cool. <laughs> Let's calm down. I'm like, I'm not calm. Are you calm? <laughs> okay. But so all right. So that was the first one. Calm all fear. All right. So what? Is, how can people? calm because we're afraid of everything well, right let's admit it we're afraid of you know messing up we're afraid of not succeeding not being a good enough parent or good enough everything so that this has to do with the furies right so yeah. how do we calm if we're going to walk through the guide now well it's a strange thing actually it's so difficult to get there by releasing like my son with down syndrome is it has no fear unless there's a clear and present danger but for us i really want to ask you have you guys ever been to a place where you really seriously thought you were about to die Anyone? Okay, have you been Whoa. to a place where there was such a catastrophe going on that everything just went silent inside you? Anybody? Okay, that's the only way I got there to begin with. First it was in surgery. I had one of those white light experiences mm -hmm. they talk about. And that was the first time I understood in f since infancy what peace felt like. And this light came and it suffused me and it was so loving, and it said, this is how you're supposed to feel in the world. And then I woke up, and I'm like, how do I do that? But what, if you go to those moments when you were in such crisis that it just didn't, anxiety was no longer useful. You just needed to be present. Weirdly enough, that's my anchor. So I had my brain mapped, and the only time I was calm was when I imagined skiing on the edge of a cliff in a blizzard with no visibility because you have to be so present. So w the, the first thing I do every single day, before I get out of bed, I wake up and I lie there and I calm my breath, which is really, you know, every culture calms the breath because it, it affects the brain stem, which is deep, which affects everything else. Mm -hmm. And I wait until my breathing is calm and my heart is calm. And then I go through the day and if there's any rise in my heartbeat, I relax it, I relax it, and it's all being pinned to those moments when I should have been in intense fear, but I was free from this world because I thought I was about to leave it. So, you know, if you haven't had that experience, I encourage you to go out to the freeway today <laughs> and just stand, yeah. No, but, 
you've had yes. those, right? Where right. just, or maybe it's when you just had a child, a time when your body has been through this thing and it takes over and it just goes, no fear, no fear. And you lead from that place. You and try you to live. live in that place. I spend an hour, okay. once I get up, sitting there and okay. returning to that place.